All right, you guys, this is um, the Monday homework that we said was extra practice. Um, and so you are still responsible for finishing this along with your Thursday night homework as well, so that this whole homework page should be finished when you turn it in tomorrow. So I'm going to go over this one with you real fast. Um, it's a lot like Tuesday night's homework, just with different numbers. So starting off on number one, it says Sally, Jesse, Raphael, and Phil went shrimping. They recorded the amount of shrimp each person netted with the graph below. So we have Sally's, Jesse's, Raphael's, and Phil's catch numbers up here. Okay, it says the four individuals decided to split the catch evenly. How many shrimp should each individual have if they are split evenly? So it's the same exact process down here with the eggs where we had to split up the eggs evenly. We want to be able to see how many total eggs do I have, and then we want to be able to split it up. So to figure out our total, what we have to do is we have to add them together. So you have right here, you have 25, you have 35, you have 15, and you have 20. And you're going to add those together, and you're going to get a sum. Okay, once you get that sum, once you add it together and you get your answer, you're going to split it. And when we split it, we use division. So after we add these up, what we're going to end up doing is we're going to divide it by the four friends. And that will be your answer that you get right here. It's finding the mean. That mean is an even share, an equal share value. Next, we have create a dot plot using the following data from of student heights in inches of Ms. Pittman's first period class. Now, so what we're going to do is a dot plot, remember, is with all the X's. So we got to put our numbers here, down here, and then we're going to put how many times those numbers up here. Okay, so I'm going to find my minimum in my box or in my list right here. And I've got, let's see, I see 59, I see 58. And it appears that 58 is my minimum, so I'm going to put 58 as my minimum. And my maximum appears to be 67. So I'm going to end my number line with 67. And I'm going to fill in the rest. So I've got 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, and 66. And then every time a number appears, I'm going to put an X above it because that's what it's representing. So 59, I'm going to put an X over 59. That means I have 159. I have 165. I have another 60. I have another 64. I have a 67, a 58, another 59, 63, 62, 64, a 59, and a 58. Okay. So that's where your dot plot, so instead of X's, you could have used dots, but that's what it should look like for you. Okay. All right, moving on to number three, we have create a box plot using the following data of the student height. So we're going to take this information and we're going to put it into a box plot. So in order to create a box plot, we have to know these five numbers. And to find these five numbers to make life the easiest, we're going to need to put these in order from least to greatest. Okay, so I'm going to have to find my minimum, which appears to be 58, then I have doo -doo -doo -doo, a 62, and then I have, do I have any more 60s? No more 60s, so I got a 70, 73, a 77, and I know I'm going real slow because I have a tendency to skip a number. And I don't want to skip anything. Oops, that should be an 8, 88, 91, and a 95. Okay. 
And so now it's really easy. I'm going to go back though and just verify that I have the right amount of numbers. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And I don't have all my numbers. And I go back and I look and I'm missing a 91. So I'm just going to add a 91 there. And that's why it's a good idea to count, go back and reference how many numbers and count how many numbers were in your original list and count how many numbers are in your list that you put in order, and then you should make sure that they match, okay? Minimum means your smallest number, so you're going to pick your smallest number from the group. Maximum is your largest number, so you're going to put the largest number from your group. Your median should be the number that is in the middle, so we can go back and forth, 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 and 85 ends up being in the middle, and that's our median that we should put right there, okay? Our Q1 is our lower half of our data, so we'd have to go back and forth, back and forth to find our Q1, which is 70, and we would put that in our answer box. And then I do the upper half, Q3, back and forth, back and forth, and I end up with 91, as my Q3. And I'm going to put those numbers on my number line, those five numbers that I get, and I'm going to create my box plot. And you should have your numbers of what they represent down below. Okay, number four says which has the highest mean, high temp or low temps? So here's our high degrees and here's our low degrees. And we're talking about average of daily temperatures in August and we have some different states, okay? We need to find which one has the highest mean. And remember, mean means to add it all up and divide by how many numbers you have. So we're going to find the mean of all these. We're going to add it up and then we're going to divide by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. We'll divide by, how, by 9 because that's how many we have. And then we'll do the same thing over here. We'll add all these numbers up. And then we'll divide it by 9. And whichever one is the highest, we'll put right here. And we're also, I want you to put what the mean was that you got for the highest. Okay? Number 5 is finding which was the greatest range. So here, range is your max minus your minimum. Okay? So you're going to find your max from the high degrees and subtract it from your minimum. And then you're going to find your max from the minimum over here under low degrees. And you're going to see which one has the greatest range or the greatest spread. Was it the high degrees or the low degrees? And you're going to tell me right there. Okay. I am not going to do Thursday's homework with you. What I will tell you is this right here, since it's not quite above the 20, we're going to call this 21, okay? That dot right there we'll call 21 for the sake of everything, okay? But everything else you should be able to do because it's just like Wednesday night's homework, except it's just different numbers. So you should be able to do that. I have full confidence in you. And if you have any questions, we'll talk about it um, tomorrow before you turn it in. But make sure that this whole paper is completely done by tomorrow that we fill it in. All right, I'll see you tomorrow.